back to my channel. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. Today, I'm going to be talking about navigating STEM as a black woman. Many of you know I work in the research and development space. I got my bachelor's of science in pre-med biology. Almost had my minor in psychology. I was a few credits short because my university changed their policy in the middle of my junior year and I had no idea. And then I also have my master's in public health with a concentration in urban healthcare disparities. My entire life, I knew I've loved science. I knew that whether I was gonna be in medicine as a physician, treating patients, or I didn't know anything about public health at the time. So, I mean, for me, I just knew at some point in my life I would be growing within the science space. And I'm so thankful that I figured out what pharmaceutical science is, clinical research and development outside of just working in a lab because I've really been able to grow as um, a STEM professional. Now, it hasn't always been easy, of course. I have experienced ageism. I like to believe that I've experienced racism. I've experienced sexism, every type of ism you could possibly think of that holds someone back. I definitely have experienced that. Navigating those specific issues have been challenging and I always feel like I have to advocate for myself and speak up for myself because most people, you know, they, they will either walk all over you or treat you a certain way if you don't come on strong, which again, for a black woman is really hard because me coming on strong or being aggressive about my career path and my passions sometimes comes off as me having like an attitude or being condescending or being smart, like having a smart mouth. Because someone has actually told me that before. But I'm just gonna go down the things that I've had to conquer and the advice that I would give to other women or other people of color in general interested in pursuing STEM, but you're afraid of the stigmas that come alongside your existence. I spoke on this channel once about how I had an employer who said a bunch of extremely racist things to me, talked about my wig, talked about minorities not being able to excel in life and how it's their fault. Everything that you could possibly imagine that's just negative, they would always target me and say it to me. I didn't really say anything and I didn't come out and say anything to the company or human resources until I already left because I was also afraid of losing my job, which is that constant thing that's in the back of your mind is like, if I speak up, will I get fired? It could happen. even in the time of Black Lives Matter, which we've been doing for years now, you just never know if the CEO or HR, whatever, if you piss off the wrong person, you end up getting fired. So a lot of the times I've always had to keep quiet, which, you know, it's not what I want to do, but it's just realistic. And I hate when people are like, oh, just speak up and say what you need to say. It's easier for people who aren't people of color to say those kind of things because you're not experiencing what I'm experiencing. And you don't realize how I'm treated versus how you are treated, if that makes sense. But one thing that I do is I always like make a mental note of all the things that I have experienced. Like there are things that every single company I've worked for where I've experienced something negative. I always remember that. And I never forget because when I leave or when I'm doing my exit interview, I like to be completely overtly, candidly honest. When I had my exit interview for the employer who was saying racial things to me, honestly, I said that one of the main reasons I'm leaving is because this person made this environment so toxic for me and was always saying these things that were so negative about my race or about women and I just don't I don't like that another thing in the overall general scheme of my career that I've experienced is like a lot of people didn't start listening to me until I got my master's degree which is it's been frustrating because I started working in a pharmacy in 2013 all the way up until 2016 so I was in a pharmacy for about three and a half years and then I went to work for a pharmaceutical company and I've been working for pharmaceutical companies ever since so you could say compounded with my pharmacy technician experience that I understood the pharmaceutical development world for at least five years in the time where before I got my master's I would literally be saying the same things I'm saying now like look at all my YouTube videos and think about all the content and all the information I give you guys and imagine someone being like oh we don't trust what you say because you don't have your master's degree I guess like for me it just felt like if I'm saying something of value, why does my degree matter? What I've noticed, or what I did notice was, there could be a white man literally saying the same thing, and they will be like, oh, that's a great idea. It's like those scenes in the movies. I'm telling you, this stuff really happens in real life. It's like the scenes in the movies where a woman is saying something and then a man says it, and they're like, oh my God, great job. That literally happened to me for majority of my career, either because I was too young, because I was a woman, or I like to believe because I'm black, and also because 
because of my education, even though I had my bachelor's of science in pre-med biology. After I got my master's, people started listening to me a bit more. There's only one woman I know in pharma who was in leadership position, and then another woman who was just like a higher up. They would always tell me, they're like, you need to go back to school. And I would ask them why. They said that the reason they weren't able to get to where they wanted to be or reach higher heights or be where they are now is either because they had not pursued or furthered their education or because they believed they were being held back because they're a woman. And I've actually heard a CEO of a pharmaceutical company that I will not name say that this one woman at this company was literally the foundation. Like imagine an entire house is being built and you just strip the whole foundation away, the house will come crashing down. That's what that woman was for the entire company. The CEO said with his own mouth that he thought she, that this woman was too young to be in a leadership position and what that's code for, because she was not young at all, what's that code for is that because she's a woman, they don't want to put her in a higher leadership position because all the people in leadership position were what? Men. Uh men. From that person's experience and her telling me different things for my own career success, she would always just tell me like, I want you to achieve great things, but you're not going to be able to if you don't further your education. And she's like, just so you know, you will always have two things against you. You're black and you're a woman. She even forgot age because I'm moving through this world very young. I say all these things and I'm just sharing all these experiences. And honestly, I feel like I'm just talking to you guys about my experiences, but I'm sharing all these things so you can learn from me. You have to be resilient. You have to be forceful. You have to come with a certain type of eloquence that other people don't have to come with. You have to literally, like they say in movies, and like Olivia Pope's dad said to her, you have to be twice as great to be treated half as good as they are treated. So you always have to work harder and just be smarter. And I know it's annoying because why should you have to work harder when you have more knowledge or intelligence than half the people out there? We will not have to be doing this forever. And I truly believe that. I believe that things are changing slowly but surely. But for the time being, anyone who's interested in moving in STEM as a person of color, you literally will have to be a force to be reckoned with. And that's how I see myself, honestly. There's not many people in my industry, I feel like, that would want to, not even, not even want to say that, because I mean, I, I am a hard worker, and I think people see that, and they see my value, and they see what I could be capable of in the future. So most of the people that I've worked for, moving on from that one employer who kind of was like a little bit racially biased, have all treated me really great and with so much respect, and they all care about me. And that's what I mean, is like, I feel like, they see my value, so they keep employees happy who they see their value. But anyway, I wanna know about some of your guys' experiences about navigating through STEM. And before I close out this video, I just wanna say one more thing. This video does apply to college students because when I was in college, I had my advisor telling me that I would never get into med school, and I had my professors telling me that I should take a year off, or just trying to delay my process of greatness. And I truly believe, again, it's because I was a person of color. Because they were not saying that to any other student. I just feel like people are always Always trying to hold minorities back and if you look at like our education system all the way from high school a lot of the people of color are held back for different reasons for example I think of my high school we had AVID which is a program that's supposed to be for first-time college students or children of immigrants or minorities in general I don't even think I saw any minorities in that AVID program and AVID was never recommended to me ever but what my high school uh, guidance counselor told me was that I would never get into a four-year university Can, like do you see what I'm saying so people need to pay attention to the institutionalized racism in this country and then in the world in general, but I want STEM students and people interested in STEM to be vigilant and pay attention. You have to be an advocate for yourself. You have to speak up for yourself. You have to create your own career plan, your own career path, because if you put it in the hands of these people who see you as less than nothing and who are only doing lip service because of Black Lives Matter, you will get nowhere. And I feel like the reason I am where I am today and moving through the world of STEM is because I choose to not let other people create a plan or a path for me in any way, shape, or form. So I am gonna end this video there. Let me know in the comments what you think about this topic and let me know if you want me to create a more tangible guide for navigating through STEM as a person of color. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. Make sure you like, share, and comment on this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until next week, guys, bye.